Hi, my name is Renee. I'm an appliance repair tech, and this comment says, Renee, please explain the time-traveling shenanigans our washers and dryers go through. Meaning, if you have a washing machine or a dryer that has a digital display that has the amount of time remaining on that cycle, that time is almost never accurate. So if you set up a timer for it, assuming we're not doing a timed dry on your dryer because a timed dry is exactly that, it's going to go by the amount of minutes that you set. But otherwise, that time is just an estimate. So on washing machines, high efficiency washing machines, a high efficiency part of it is that you're going to enter in all of your settings and you're going to put your clothing in and at the very beginning of the cycle, before it pops up that estimated time, it's actually going to sense the load. It's going to add a little bit of water, move around a little bit, basically wait your clothes and trying to see how much clothing you have in there to determine how long to run the cycle for and if you put a large size load of clothing but you set it to normal for example then yeah the estimated amount of time is going to run even longer another thing that can make it run longer is if it is a really unbalanced load so if you do a lot of different types of fabric in the same load together sometimes the light fabric ends up on one side and the heavy fabric ends up on the other and that's going to shake all over the place when it shakes that much your machine is going to stop the spin cycle try to add more water to float your clothes and redistribute them and then it's going to try to spin again and if it's still off balance it's going to stop and restart and stop and restart and yeah that's gonna add minutes to the cycle and then in the dryer assuming you're not doing a timed dry because again a timed dry goes just based on how many minutes you set it for the other option is a sensor dry and most dryers have these two little sensor bars that every time wet clothing hits it it's going to bridge that electrical connection and that tells your control board that there's still wet clothing and it still needs to run so if you're doing things like jeans and t-shirts together in the same load for example and all of the t-shirts are what's hitting those sensor bars it's going to think everything is dry before it's actually dry because the t-shirts dry faster than the jeans and and if you have all of the jeans hitting those sensor bars, it's going to run for way longer because it thinks that everything is still wet, even if the t-shirts might be dry at that point. And then if you're not cleaning your dryer venting at least once a year, and if you're not removing lint from the filter, a bunch of different factors there, your dryer is not going to be able to effectively push all of the moisture out. So that estimated time remaining is assuming that the dryer is installed correctly and being maintained correctly. So if it's not, yeah, the minutes are gonna be off. Moral of the story is, Assuming your washer and dryer are installed correctly and being used and maintained correctly, that's how those minutes are going to be the most accurate they can be. When they're jumping all over the place, something's wrong. It's either the installation or it's some way that we're using it or we're maintaining it. So you got to kind of look into that. That's why I really suggest that people read their manuals because all of the information on how to care for your machine is going to be in there. And trust me when I say most people get it wrong, but I hope that clears up the mystery.